This morning, the Lord has brought us together again in His mess. And we have gathered to say thank you to Him because He is the one that preserves our lives. Today is the last Sunday of this month, January. You know, everything is just going so, so quick. And today also is the last day of our fasting and prayer, as we all know. And I pray that the sacrifice of our fasting and prayer will not be in vain in the name Amen. of Jesus. The purpose of God over our lives will be manifest in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will all be restored on heavy areas of our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Happy Sunday to all our viewers at home. Good morning. God bless you as you are connected with us this morning in the name of Jesus. The best place to be is the presence of God. There's no other place, beloved. The best place to be is always in the place where God hears your call, where there is answers to every question. So we are here this morning. It is not a mistake and it is also not a coincidence. It's those people that the Lord wanted to be here this morning that are here. And I pray that the blessing of today's service will be released unto us all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning once again. This morning I'll be reading quickly from the book of Romans chapter 8 from verse 35. Romans chapter 8 from verse 35. Romans chapter 8 from verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, no, in all these things we are more than conqueror through him who have loved us. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for us this morning. You know, the word of God is always so perfect at the right time. Let me just use it that way. You know, we have been fasting. We have been calling unto the Lord in this season. We have been asking questions. And now the word of God is now talking to us that no matter what it is that may come to your way, even during or after this fasting and prayer, beloved, no matter what it is, nothing, don't allow anything, don't allow situation. Don't allow persecution, don't allow famine, don't allow tribulation, don't allow anxiety, don't allow sickness, even fear, don't permit it. Because nothing will separate us all from the love of Jesus Christ. That is the purpose why he has come to pay the price that is not even hold at all. He died for us that we may live. He has come to die for us so that we can be able to overcome all this persecution. So your, your thoughts... You are, you, are, you are the product of your prayer, beloved. So when you pray and you believe that God has heard you, stay in your faith. Because the word of God says, when we call unto him, he said he will answer us. So if you have called unto him, there's tendency that God will hear you. So don't let your faith be weak. Be, 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 be. Don't let your faith be fade away. Stay in your faith. And I pray the Lord will answer all our prayers in the name of Jesus. No matter what it is, that the word will bring to us, we will overcome in the name of Jesus. This is the word of God. He said, nothing, nothing, beloved, don't allow anything. You know, we are fasting, we are praying, you know, you are, you are, you are expecting everything to begin to work in, in places. It may not be so, because there is always a reason for everything. There is always a reason. The Bible says there is time and season for everything. So when the time comes, beloved, you will need to not pass you by. Stay in your, in your faith and let the will of God be done concerning you. Don't run to another alternative. Let God be your everything. Let it be the first, let it be the last. I pray the Lord will hold us in this season. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the grace to wait on him patiently. The Lord will release unto us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Shall we rise up on our feet? As we begin to give him thanks for all that is done for us. Father, we have come to say thank you. Jehovah, we have come to adore you. We thank you because you have been God in us. Thank you for your love and your grace. Let us begin to give thanks to him. Begin to appreciate him for how far the Lord has helped us. He is the only one that has helped us. It is not because we are so good. 
It is not because we are better than those that have passed away. It is not because we are so righteous, but His grace and His mercy sought us out this morning. Oh, Father, we have come to give thanks to you. We appreciate you. We give you honor. We adore you because you are the great I am. Father, we celebrate your majesty this morning. In the name of Jesus. You are God. From beginning to the end, there is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God. From beginning to the end. comes your way, God will forever God. If he has not done it, that does not reduce him. He is God. There's no time for any complaint. There's no time for any, any, any argument or whatever it is. He is God by himself. He has promised, surely it will manifest. He has promised, he said this is our year of divine restoration. He will manifest it because he is God that fulfill his promise. Let us begin to give thanks to him because he is God. Let us begin to give thanks to him because he is God. Jehovah, we have come to say thank you because you are God all by yourself. Oh, you are God. You are God from beginning. You are God from the end. You are God, Father, from the beginning. You are God to the end. There's no time. There's no time for any complaints. Father, we have come to give thanks to you. Oh, Father, we have come to appreciate you because you are God. In us and through us, you are God. Father, we appreciate you. Oh, we give you all the glory because you are God all by yourself. Oh, Father, you do not need anybody but because you, your, by your grace and your mercy, you have chosen us to be among the one you are for. Father, we have come before you to say thank you. Thank you for being God over our lives. God, thank you for being God over our family. Thank you for being God, over all that pertain to us, Father, will lift our voices unto you to so say thank you because you are God. Blessed be your wonderful name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. Let us begin to confess all unrighteousness unto the Lord this morning. The Bible says, if there's any iniquities in us, that the Lord will not hear us. Let us begin to say, God, we are so sorry. Every sin that we might have committed this morning, let us begin to lay it at the altar of Jesus. Let us begin to lay it unto him. Let us begin to lay it unto him. He has come that we may be renewed. He has come that we may be restored. He has come that we may be forgiven. Let us begin to confess every sin. No matter how big your sin is, begin to tell it to him. Begin to talk to him. He said, if we confess, if we confess, Every sin, he said, is just, is faithful to forgive us from every unrighteousness. Every unrighteousness, name it. You may be a mother, or you may be a gossiper, you may be whatever you may be. Say it to him this morning. Begin to tell him, Father, I've missed it again. Oh, Father, I have heard again. Show mercy unto me. Oh, I have seen again, Father, sanctify me. I have missed it again, Father. Let your mercy be released. This is not the time to, to, to for justice or whatever it is. This is the time to confess. The time of confession is now. Begin to ask for, for mercy of God. Begin to ask for his grace. Begin to ask the Lord to show mercy unto us. As a family, Father, we will ask for your mercy. As the church, Father, let your mercy be released. Whatever that will hinder us from this gathering, oh Lord, Father, we pray for mercy. In the name of Jesus, let us be sanctified. Oh, let us be made whole. In the name of Jesus, let every of our sins be forgiven. Father, we say thank you. Oh, Jehovah, we appreciate you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have confessed. Amen. Beloved, let us begin to sanctify these premises with the blood of Jesus. Let us begin to set the blood of Jesus, begin to purge this place. Every activity during the week, Father, we sanctify this place right now. Whatever that is not of God that is in this building, Father, we wash them away with the blood of Jesus. Father, we pray that this altar will be sanctified. Oh, the whole church will be sanctified to your glory in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of God, every power that from the pit of air that walk around this premises. Father, we nail them on the cross right now. In the name of Jesus, whatever activity that has been done during the week, oh, Father, that is not holy. Let the blood
blood of Jesus begin to purge them away. Oh, let this building be sanctified to your glory this morning. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus upon this arena. Oh, the blood of Jesus upon each and every one of us. We plead the blood of Jesus upon our mind, upon our souls. We plead the blood of Jesus upon the instrument. In the name of Jesus, Father, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. In the name of Jesus, let the blood begin to saturate this place right now. Let this place be made holy. Oh, Father, we welcome your authority. This place sanctify this place in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus begin to purify every, everything that is here. No, let this arena be sanctified. Let the whole the areas be sanctified in the name of Jesus. Father, we sow this neighborhood with the, with the blood of Jesus. Thank you because you are faithful in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray for this neighborhood. Let us begin to pray that when they hear the voice of God, they will embrace it. In the name of Jesus, let us begin to pray that this building, that this area, this neighborhood, we hear the voice of God about. They will begin to run to the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that this neighborhood will hear your voice. In the name of Jesus, they will hear your voice and run to you. In the name of Jesus, Father, we are trusting unto you. You said we should go out to the one whole Lord. Oh, I'm, I'm evangelized. Father, we pray as they hear us in this building. Father, they will begin to run to you. In the name of Jesus, when they seek, when we speak, oh Lord, healing will begin to manifest. Oh, when we speak, oh Lord, deliverance will begin to take place. In the name of Jesus, we pray, oh Lord, King of Lord, that this neighborhood, oh Lord, will hear your voice. In the name of Jesus, they will hear the voice of the Most High God and begin to do the will of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we have come to give thanks to you. We have come to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We celebrate you because you are faithful. Blessed be your wonderful name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Beloved, let us begin to tell the Lord this morning that my purpose of coming today will not be in vain. That the purpose why you brought me here this morning will not be in vain. You tell the Lord, I don't want to come and go like that. Don't let me go. The way I came, please don't let me go. Just the way I came, please don't let me go. the Lord this morning, that you want to be, be renewed, you want to be restored, you don't want to go empty and that the Lord should fill you, or that the Lord should meet with you, in the name of Jesus, that the Lord should speak his word to you, where you need to be here, in the name of Jesus, Father, we pray this morning, we don't want to go the way we came, oh Father, we want to go full with your word, oh we want to be imparted with your word today, in the name of Jesus, don't let us go the way we came, Father, we pray, oh Lord, King of Lord, let your word come true for every one of us. Oh, situationally speak your word unto us. In the name of Jesus, let your word come to us, O oh Lord, and let your glory be seen in us. Father, we have come to say thank you. Oh, our Father, we give honor to you. We appreciate you. Thank you because you are here with us. We soak every one of us with the blood of Jesus. Thank you because you are here with us. In Jesus. Mighty name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 It is time to praise the King of Kings, our rock and our deliverer. The one that do wonders. May his name be glorified in the name of Jesus. <coughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Jesus. Are we happy to be in his presence this morning? Amen. I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. Oh, I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. Oh, I will praise you, Lord. If nobody is I will praise you, Lord. If nobody
us together in your sanctuary this morning. You, Father, indeed we are grateful. You, as a family, we are grateful. You, Father, as a church, you have come to say thank you. Thank you for your promises that is being manifest, you have come to say thank you. Thank you oh, for the testimonies of our mouth, you have come to say thank you. Thank you Jesus, we appreciate you. Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Oh, we adore your holy name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, let the service continue. May you continue with us. Amen. Let your spirit flow, O Lord. Amen. And let your power move in this Amen. place. Amen. And let your glory be saved. Amen. Thank you because you are with us. Amen. So the rest of the service with the Lord of Jesus. Lord of Jesus. Bless every your Amen. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Welcome to another Sunday in the house of the Lord. You are not here by mistake. Tell somebody good morning. Tell him how welcome to the house of the Lord. It is well. Amen. It is well. Amen. Congratulations. It is the last day of our fasting. Amen. And the Lord has been good to us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, welcome to another uh, Sunday in the house of the Lord. This is Power of Exhortation Church of Christ. For those watching us online, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Welcome to another Sunday. And for those that have been fasting with us, it is well. And I'll tell you, it has been a wonderful experience. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Power of Association Church of Christ. We worship here every Sunday from 11 to 1. We have the online programs every Friday, Wednesdays, World Hangout, 8 p.m. It's an online program. Please join, share, and comment. Share, share, share. Subscribe if you have not subscribed to our YouTube, but be a part of it. Amen. And God will, and God will bless you as you do. There is a Friday program that is the Bible study. We do it on Friday. It's a Bible online program. Please be a part of it every Friday, 8 p.m. Bible study. For you to be a part of it, drop off your number. You can drop it off online. We'll add you if you want us to add you. You'll be a part of that. We have the last Fridays of the month, the prayer services. They are also 8 p.m. Every last Friday of the month. 8 p.m. There's a prayer program. Please be a part of it. Share if you can. But I don't think that's share. That's you just be a part of it. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Tell somebody it is his time or her time for a testimony. <laughs> Your time for a testimony. Amen. Please put on the next program. Celebration will never leave our homes. Amen. It will never leave our homes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is never too early to start sharing it. Put it in your agenda. It's on the wall. For those watching online, you may not be able to see this. But if you go to our church page, there is a program coming up. That's the anniversary of this church. Ten years in existence. A hand of applause. Let's thank God for what he's doing in our lives. We thank God for what he's doing in our lives. Ten years in the house of the Lord. Ten years in the body of Christ. It's not easy. Our daddy is our pastors coming from all the way from Sweden. And we also have Pastor BC coming around. That day, we'll have our mommy and daddy also included here. We'll be celebrating it. It might not be here in this uh, 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 space. It be, it's going to be on the other side. So, please take note. Watch the address. It is not this address, but the other side of the building. is on the other side of the street. So, you are uh, coming to the Bucharini Land Bukharini Land 6 Bukharini Bukharini So but check our, our sites You will see those addresses So please come be a part of it 
invite somebody. We have space enough. So invite somebody. Let it be known that that day, they say, I mean, Gesto was blocked. The major road. people we can no longer come through because power of resurrection was doing their 10th year anniversary. Amen. 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 Invite Amen. your brothers, your sisters, your auntie, your... You have time enough. It's going to take place. If you look at it, uh, the... We are doing it in March. Where is it? 26. 26. Oh, sorry. Yeah. March 26. So which means there's time enough. Because sometimes people say, ah, you say it too, it's, it's not time. I cannot invite anybody anymore. March 26, that is like, what, two, three months back? So please, you have time enough. Tell them. Put it in your agenda. Call them. Let them come in. And if you are watching us online, um, you are wondering when we, maybe one day I'll be part of that church. It is an opportunity for you to come in and taste the power of God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes. Power of Institution Church of Christ. Welcome to another service. Any testimonies? I know there are. <laughs> yes. Sister Sass, please. I want to see what the Lord has done for me. You are taking away my sorrow like Almost 11 months. <laughs> was eating, 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 and growing and moving about in my stomach. Yesterday, I was telling him the story. I was walking from in the hospital, climbed three stairs, this case, come down, go, come down, go. I spent like two weeks in the hospital before giving birth to him. I was just telling him the story. I was eating all the fufu in my stomach. <laughs> that they have to be. Driving him in my stomach, you have to come down because they inject me for like two weeks. He still don't want to come down. They take me to operation room to operate me. We come with his neck. They will take me back that this child he don't want to come out through through operation. He just want to come out normal, but he's still comfortable there. But I just want to thank God that Jesse Day Nancy was twelve. I also want to thank God for his life because in school when he was four years, they told us that. Uh, and Nelson play a lot and uh, is a slow learner. But I want to thank God today. The level that he had, we didn't expect it. I just want to thank God that he didn't go to special middle bar. He's going to normal middle bar. I just want to bless the name of the Lord because nothing is impossible in his sight. Pray. Praise 
praise the Lord. I just want to add a little thing to what she said because uh, when he was uh, climbing the trap up and down, I was also there. We spent those time together there. I had to sleep on the couch in the hospital. But I saw something which I, when I was looking at him, I will never forget in my life. When he came out, he said, when they gave it to me, and I hold him, he just opened his eyes, was just looking at me. I said, you see, yeah, they said, no, that is our children. I said, I don't know, but look at him, he opened his eyes. I just thank God, I thank God for his life, I just thank God, I was so happy to see yesterday, he said, 12 years, as a child of death. I just thank God. 12 years, he's taller than mommy and papi. <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Yes, so, if I say, uh, everybody has something about, in fact, it's something about every kid in this church. That is why when we are doing our 10th anniversary, when I saw that anniversary, it's like, um, even when we are at the other building, I always take pictures. I have a special map, I call it church. Church pictures. I see some of my pictures, Pastor God will have it. But it's 10th anniversary. I'm going to share some with him because of our page on so that we put some on the day. You see these beautiful faces when they are crawling, <laughs> when they were. In fact, when from the crash where we did barbecues, all of them. Today they are all men. Let me use that word. And we are women. Girls and boys, big ones, you know. So we give God the glory and we thank God for I mean Oh, let me put it this way. The history of this church, we've never lost anything. And may continue to be so. God will put them all together. He's given us guidance over them. He'll give us the wisdom to protect and guide them. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Any other testimony? Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Since I was born and now I am growing old. It is. 
is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks unto you, Lord. All the things that you have done, I'm grateful for your love. I give you the praise. It is coming from my heart. Voices of Presentation Church of Angelic Voices of Presentation. 
Yes. Now that's what I like. Challenges from the from the ladies. Or from the youth. Who stand against the Lord? No one can, no one will. Who can stand against the King? No
let your will and not be done. I need nothing but God. When it comes to the place that God pray, you see God in his majesty. That God at this point in my life, I can't do it without you. I have been lying to myself that my strength can carry me. I have been lying to my strength, myself, that the anointing alone can carry me. I have been deceiving myself that my own strength can do it. But now I know, God, you are the only one. Just begin to say, Lord, touch me. Bless me, your holy name. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let all the children that have the bed in the month of uh, January to come forward. Adult, anyone that have their bed here in the month of January, can you come forward? Thank you, Jesus. Marcos in Pravike de Bush. Zeto Kan de Bush, Jato Kedi Bush. Month of January, just come forward. Maybe if you want to see that date. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pastor William, can we have to pray for them? Why the church? Put your hand towards them. Pastor Olin, I have to pray for you. Okay, let's pray. Our God in heaven, we give you the glory, we give you all the praise for your greatness and power. Lord, we thank you because all souls are yours. Lord, these children, you lend it to us, the, uh, the parents. Lord, thank you for preserving them. Thank you for your word concerning them. Lord, I pray that your purpose, your will, your plan concerning these children as it has ordained from the beginning may it come to pass. Amen. Lord, I pray that you will strengthen them Amen. in this adulterous and wicked generation. Amen. Lord, I pray that you give the parents the needed wisdom, under, not understanding, to understand their emotions, to understand their hormones, to understand everything, Lord, their parents who help them to grow. Lord, I pray that these children, as they came from you, they will return for you in Jesus' name. Yeah. And I pray, God, that devil will not succeed. Yeah. In the midst of a pure pleasure, they will prevail in Jesus' yeah. name. Let your anointing be multiplied upon them. Let your nation upon them. Amen. Let them be an example Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, you will not they need it to excel. Amen. The anointing they need it to excel. Amen. Lord, I pray you grant it upon them. Amen. Lord, I pray that the seal of the Trinity will be upon them. Amen. Amen. Every eye that see them, every uh, voice that hear in their voice, they will favor them in Jesus' name. Amen. But where the doors are open or closed, it shall be open by the owner of Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, in years to come, they will look back, their parents will look back, and they will praise your name. Amen. So shall it be, Lord. Amen. I decree it, and it is established. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Can we just all lift up our hand and point to this prayer point? This is our prayer point for the year. Just point your hands towards this prayer point. That every request that people have made, they have written down. That heaven should hasten their answer. That Lord should have mercy on them. According to the will of God for their life, let their prayer, prayer request be answered in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up this prayer point before you. And believe there is no way they can run to but to you. They have brought their heart desire to you. Lord, I call them to your way for their life. Father, answer your children in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever that will be their heart desire, according to you, Father, let them answer them in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever they have written here, Father, Lord God, According to your will, Father, establish it for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Even what they did not write, Lord, surprise them in the name of Jesus. Lord, surprise them in the name of Jesus. Lord, surprise them in the name of Jesus. Whatever they are bound with this, they are request. Lord, let it be bound in the name of Jesus. Whatever they are loose with their request, Father, let them lose.
Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Over their life, over their home, this one will not win. In the name of Jesus Christ. Over their children, they will not win. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every door that has been locked against them. Father, as they have said, they want the door to be open. Father, according to your will, open the door of prayer for your children. Open the door of testimony. In the name of Jesus. Close every door of shame. Close every door of sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we'll be waiting unto you for, three, for uh, 21 days fasting and prayer. And you told me this is the year of restoration. Lord, everyone has written any prayer request here. Father, whatever that need to be restored in their life, speak to you, Lord. Restore them. In the name of Jesus. Lord, restore them. In the name of Jesus. Let them be restored. In the name of Jesus. Everything that they have written according to your will, Father, let heaven answer them. In the name of Jesus. And those who do not have your request here, Lord, you know their hearts. Father, hasten and answer them. In the name of Jesus Christ, let their request be met. Let everyone has answered them. In the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost move for them. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we commit today's service to your hand. Lord, speak for me. Touch every life. Touch every soul. Let your word be preached, undiluted. In the name of Jesus, let us live better than we came. Let our life be transformed. Let the power in your word punch us. Remove every negativity from us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, as we listen to your word, let your word bring us far from hell. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it bring us closer to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we appreciate you and reduce why you increase. Let your soul, Jesus, in love be saved. I hide myself behind the cross. Father, let Jesus be saved and not me. Every self in me, let it die in the name of Jesus Christ. We appreciate you, Father. We give all glory to you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Praise the Lord, somebody. Shout and together, hallelujah. In his presence, and I pray that the Lord will answer our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. As the men that be waiting unto him, ever will deliver your answer in the name of Jesus Christ. By his grace, today I'm going to speak on what I've captioned knowledge, a key to restoration. Tell your neighbor you need knowledge. Knowledge, a key to restoration. The Bible was speaking in the book of Hosea, Hosea, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. I say, My people. Were destroyed from lack of what? See, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Thou that that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that house that thou hast forgotten the law of the God, I will also forget thy children. The Lord will not forget us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said because we rejected knowledge. It means there is knowledge, but people chose to reject knowledge. If I mean knowledge in this, in this way, I'm trying to talk about the knowledge of the kingdom. Knowledge about God. Knowledge about what to do. Because there are many knowledge. Some people are professors. Some people have, have doctorate degree. They also have their own knowledge. But I'm talking about the knowledge in the kingdom. Praise God. May the Lord open our eyes to understand in the name of Jesus Christ. Because we must be equipped with what to do, what not to do, for us to run this race to the end time. If we want to join in and make it to the end, we must know exactly what to do. <coughs> the kingdom of God is full with do's and the don'ts. And that's why I was talking to one. One brother, uh, it's almost, really, almost a year now, he was trying to tell me that the Bible is used to cage people. That the Bible just is it's like a cage for him. That's where he's, he's a Christian, the one the place I'm talking about. He's a Christian that has been Christian for years. But he said, yeah, see, see what is in the Bible is we don't necessarily have to do everything. Can you close that door, please? He said the Bible is a cage. Like, it doesn't allow people to do 
what they want to do. How many people believe that it's also a cage? No, don't let them deceive ourselves now. It looks like a cage. <laughs> why, why, why would you? It, it, it looks like, ordinarily, like yeah, it puts you uh, in a bus. Something like that. Yeah, but everybody, you know, the legs, okay. If I was right, I said, it's good. It's a good cage. Praise God. I want to be in that kind of cage. A cage that protects me from my enemy. A cage that puts me in the right place. I say, you know, there are things that most of us run away from that if we continue doing by now, we will have lost, lost our life. We will have found ourselves somewhere else. But because we have been restricted. So I tell you guys, I say, it's a restriction. <laughs> Any man or woman that cannot live under a restriction is not even worth to live. If you cannot, you know, when people are having issues, I always ask, who can I advise them? Who can I, who can I talk to to talk to it? Everybody has somebody in life that is af not afraid of, but you can advise. Like you can advise you. Everybody, have, if you don't have that, you are not worth to live. Praise God. Amen. You must have somebody that. They can say, oh, let them let talk to that brother. Let them talk to that sister. You will be able to talk to him. If you don't have that, like you are a highlighter yourself, I don't think you are in the right place. And that's why it's difficult for some people to be controlled by God. If they cannot even take advice from people around them, they cannot take for advice from God that they do not see there's always somebody in somebody's life that can say, okay, we talk to him. Maybe you are misbehaving. Somebody can call you to order. If you don't have people that can call you to order, you will keep on making mistakes. And that's why God makes us and gives us what can call us to the order. And that's the word of God. And to people, they see it as a way to restore or change them, which is a nice case to be. Don't do that. It's for our benefit. Tell your neighbor it's for your benefit. <laughs> Truly, if I look at everything in the Bible, it's so strange that people that don't even believe, they take their principle from the Bible. John Rivers. They use the principle in the Bible and they are prospering. But we are kneeling down, praying, fasting, with no principle applied. I will expect the same result. It doesn't work. You do the spirituality, but there are some physical things you must do. I like here to be extended, make it bigger. But I tell you the fact: if I go for one thousand year fast and prayer, I lay hand on this wall, it will not extend. God will just be looking at a stupid man, a stupid pastor. Why I will be here blaming God? I, I, I'll be fast one time to move this wall. God will be saying, you are very stupid. Because that's not the will of God. It's really okay. Here's too small. Move to a better place. Praise God. Not to pray for the world. Move. It doesn't this kind of world doesn't move. Spiritual world move, not this one. Praise God. So knowledge is very, very important. Take it to your home. Take it to your marriage. If a husband lacks knowledge or a wife lacks knowledge, they will not understand what God says about marriage. So you want your life, you want your home to be restored, you need adequate knowledge from the word of God. He created the marriage from the first place and he made man the head. So anyone outside that always cause chaos. So knowledge takes you as a man that I'm in charge. And what does, what does that mean? It gives you a re bigger responsibility. I have seen man again, oh, I'm in charge. I'm in charge, they mean that they can control everything. No. I'm in charge means I am going to tell on this home how I want it to be. That's what knowledge is for you. It gives you in charge and it gives you responsibility. That my children, my wife, they are under me. I must teach them what to do. I will not be a bad example to my kids. Once the father began to be a bad example to the family, to the kids, it's already a disgraced father. I pray you will not be one in the name of Jesus. Amen. So knowledge tells you 
a responsibility has been committed to my hand. <coughs> and I must shape this home the way I want to be. So when he says, my people reject knowledge, and because of that they were destroyed, it means they are laid down rules or knowledge that we're supposed to do that we fail to do them. And that brings chaos into our life. I pray for everyone that is having one chaos or the other in their life. May heaven begin to have ways in your life in the name of Jesus. May every chaos begin to give way in the name of Jesus Christ. Because it has been said, is it because we reject knowledge? We pray more than knowledge. Instead of all looking for knowledge, we pray more. Prayer is good. Fantastic. Jesus recommended prayer. There are situations that don't move without prayer. Jesus himself had that kind of issue. When they came to him, the disciples, they were trying to cast out demon. Why is the demon no answer to us? Jesus, I believe he will laugh. He will like, look at this people. Say this kind, say this kind, this kind, this kind doesn't go away except with fasting and prayer. So there are kind that doesn't go. Not every situation needs prayer. There are some situations that needs knowledge. Not every situation. Like if I say here, move one. This one doesn't need. I need Buddha to bring this one down. Like what the disciples did when they saw the demon, I don't know what they were doing, they were not going to cast down. And Jesus looked at them, you don't do this ordinarily because this is a spiritual battle. Knowledge tells you that there are battles that are spiritual, that must be fought spiritually. Ignorance tells you that you pick on your wife or pick on your husband that is the cause of the problem at home. But knowledge tells you, this is not the woman I'm married. This is not the man I'm married. Something is at stake. What happened to this man? This is not my kids. Something has taken over her. Something has taken over him. A strange power has entered him. A strange power has entered her. This is not my child. This cannot be the wife I married. This can't be the, woman, uh, the husband I married. Something has changed. The destiny has been transformed. That's the place of knowledge. You see beyond ordinary. You see beyond the present situation, but you see that this battle is not ordinary. You see, but my people, because they lack knowledge, they were destroyed. Knowledge tells you God is number one in lives. He owns everything. And if he owns everything, he can give everything. When the situation happens to us, whom do you run to first in your life? It tells you who is God in your life. If something happens in your life now, what is the next step you're going to take? If you are knowledgeable as a Christian, you know God should be consulted. <coughs> I've seen throughout the Bible when people are having issues, those that run to God, God answers them. <coughs> They give them solution to their problem. I pray for somebody here. Amen. You will receive a solution to your problem in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is what God can do. You put your eyes to see the solution. There are things that we go through in life that we need a simple solution. But until God shows us. Knowledge. Very important. Very, very important. Very useful. As Christians, we carry on this journey. Without knowledge. No, it's not possible. Our journey is not a, how will I say it? What do they call this guy? Ordinary meter journey. It's crazy, no. We are running a marathon. Marathon. Long journey. And that's why some people started yesterday, but today they are no more because they thought it's a sprint. They thought it's hundred meter. So people start as a Christian. One year, two years, they were like, why is that God? And they killed because they lack knowledge. If you have your knowledge, you will know that God, your one thousand years, just like a day in his eyes. If 
have that knowledge, you understand that this journey is until we get there. Praise God. Amen. A woman was asking, say, Pastor, when we go, I said, I don't have the time to If I have it, I tell you. How God answers, nobody knows. We pray. We speak the mind of God. He do the healing. He do the deliverance. According to his will. No pastor can move his hand. No pastor. We pray, we declare his mind. We declare his cancer. If you will to do it, you will do it. People that follow the hand of God in the Bible, they fit the percussion. When they go to someone, we want king. They were forcing him. God said, it's not yet time. But God gave them to a permissible will. And you see what happened to them. There's always a repercussion for that. But no less takes us that God is the only one that has the answer. That made the Christianity easy for us. Then you will not see that, oh, because this man, because you are looking at God. You are not looking at your pastor. You are not looking at a member as a pastor. You are looking at God. Ask many pastors here. Church members can frustrate pastor. Only can testify to this. If anyone that can frustrate the pastor more is the members. Praise God. <laughs> they are the one that <laughs> I was speaking to one pastor. He said, Ah, the member just they can frustrate you. And that is true. Pastor also can fulfill member. That's why you don't look at men. As long as you are a woman, your focus must be shifted if you are a woman. A Christian that is having that knowledge that God is the only one that I must follow. And if I choose to follow that God, if you choose to follow that God, how would God know that you are following Him? If by obey Him, by doing what He says, praise God. So knowledge tells you that every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God must be obeyed. Must be respected. If this speaks, it means what it says. When he says something, he has a reason for saying it. There are battles that are waiting us in the future, that God is preparing us for now. But some of us want to run away from the battle. And when we get to the place where now we will face the battle, like, what, what is this? Why is this happening in my life? And but God is already preparing us to get to the place, to give you the strength to get to the place. So it takes your knowledge to understand that God cannot, tell your neighbor, God cannot make a mistake. God cannot make a mistake. Look at what the Bible says in the book of John. John chapter 8, verse 32. John 8, verse 32. He said, You shall know the truth, and the truth that you know will make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth that you know is the one that will make you free. Not how many sermons you listen to that will make you free, not how many lays of hand upon your head that will make you free. You want to be free from sickness, free from death, free from attack, you must know the truth. As a matter of fact, when you cry about situation, you open my eye to see how many truths that you know. When I cry about your finance, for example, you open my eye to understand what is the truth you know about finance. You call my people were destroyed for lack of knowledge. Everywhere we suffer ignorance, you will see the absence of knowledge. My people are destroyed. And they say, if you shall know the truth, and that truth that you know is the one that your freedom is entitled to. Your freedom, every ignorance, everything that you don't know, any man that is doing better than you, he knows what you don't know. Anyone you see a Christian that things are not working well for, 
But yet you're still praising God. You know what you don't know. But some Christian, I pray to you, we'll be working with everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you see the other side of life, they quit becoming Christian. Not only member, I've seen pastor that draw mic. I said, I don't want to go again. Why? I don't want to preach the Bible again. I don't want to talk to people about it. I don't want to evangelize again. Because they think, no. It doesn't worth it. They quit Christianity. Because they're thinking what they expect doesn't happen at their own time. But not let Christian knows that this area of my life that I'm not functioning well, what is the thing that I must know? My business that is not going well, what is the secret? Everything is the one. What must I know? My home that is going through all kinds of pains, what is the secret? What must I do better? What have I been doing wrongly? Knowledge. Bring freedom. You shall know the truth. And the truth that you know is the one that will make you free. It's the only one that will make you free. You want to be free from oppression? You must know the truth. Look at what Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Isaiah 5, verse 13. I pray you will not walk into captivity yourself in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. He said, therefore, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are vanished. Are vanished. And they are more to dry up with text. Because lack of knowledge. It means they walk into a bondage by themselves. Just like Lot. Lot, the Bible says, he used his own leg to walk into the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Because he lacked knowledge. When he, he was struggling with Abraham, and I was like, okay, Abraham says, choose wherever you want to go. And from his greedy eyes, he saw ground that was level. Everything was okay. So he thought, oh, this is so nice. He chose. And after he chose, after he's gone, go to Abraham, the vision. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you walk in by facing my people go to captivity. They make friends with their enemy or no enemy. They marry wrong husband. They marry wrong wife. They went to wrong business. They gone into captivity. They use their own self to go into captivity. Why? Because they lack knowledge. I pray for every children here. May heaven direct you in the name of Jesus. May help you open your mind in the name of Jesus. May you receive the knowledge of God. In the name of Jesus. May you receive the knowledge of God. In the name of Jesus. May you receive the knowledge of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't want them to be in captivity. Nobody here that wants to go into captivity. You see, but knowledge is very important. Look at what the Bible says in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. We'll be waiting for restoration. And if you don't know what to do, you will be on the same spot. 2 Kings, chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. When the people were having issue, they knew where to run to. You see, and the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant as my Lord see it. But the water is not on the ground barrier. Verse 20. And he said, Bring me his new cruise and put soft the earth. And he brought it to him. Verse 21. And he went forth onto the spring of the water and cast the salt in there. And said, Thus said the Lord, I have healed this water. There shall not be, not be from this any more death or barren land. In the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that is on my voice. Whatever situation in your life, that is taking or killing from you by the power of the Holy Ghost. May it stop in the name of Jesus Christ. May it stop now in the name of Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? They have issue. Everything was pleasant. Their life, everything was okay. But they have a water that is killing them. Something kills them. After Elijah prayed, the Bible said, no more killing, no more death in the land. 
Because they knew what to do. They know exactly what to do. Tell people, stop struggling with your own life. Stop struggling with your life. Get enough understanding about your situation. That's what we need. We need enough understanding. I will understand what, what the Bible says in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10. That the devil has no agenda or agenda of destruction. But Jesus came with an agenda of restoration. <coughs> the devil has no agenda that to destroy. And that's why things are very easy to get from the devil. I was talking to one man on phone yesterday. We spoke for like family. He said, When they will give you one, they will take thousands from you. It's very easy to get from the devil. Very easy. It is the easiest shortest cut to get. And when the, when the devil is giving you, he will not tell you how to, you are going to pay him. Mm-mm. It's after you start enjoying the thing. Now you show up. <laughs> then you will say, but you didn't say it. Yeah. Just like when you sign a contract, yeah. there's some sin they write very, very small. If you don't read those things, you are in for trouble. <laughs> you can't win the court. They will tell you, but it's there. There was a company in America years ago. I heard... They signed, they, I don't know if they signed to it also here. They put a contract. If you don't want, if you want this, click yes. Ticket. So they realize it. Then they now change it. If you don't want it, click yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so people have to go. So they, they think it's still the same. But not they have changed the English. Yeah. So what am I trying to say? Don't take from the devil. Because we have to know that the devil has no agenda than the agenda of destruction. Any home, any man, any woman that are crying, the devil is rejoicing. He rejoices in our tears. He rejoices in our sickness. He rejoices when we have pain. That's duty. He celebrates like when you come out and give testimony. What God has did to you. Then we also give testimony when things are going wrong for you. That's, that's, that's his job. That is what he came to do. He came to kill. Do you think it's a joke? It's not a joke. Someone has been condemned. He knew exactly that he won't make it. So his duty now is to pull as many as possible to be destroyed with him. Oh, I see your freedom today in the name of Jesus. I see, I see your freedom in the name of Jesus. Your home is free in the name of Jesus. Your family are free in the name of Jesus. Your children are free in the name of Jesus. Christ. He has no agenda. The agenda of destruction is what he carries around. How many people have been killed this year? We write, we write, we wrote our prayer point. This, but the devil also have his own agenda mapped out. But the agenda has failed concerning you yeah. and your children yeah. and your family yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that is why you see some people do like, what happened? She was here yesterday. Something have changed. What happened? Every mapped out evil ahead of you. The Lord wipe them off in the name of Jesus Christ. It has no agenda. And if you have the understanding that if he's going to give you it will take more from you. That will make you to run far away from the devil. Far away from the devil. Any home, any life that he enters, to, he makes sure that he pull down the hole. He makes sure that something must miss the hole because he has no agenda but agenda of destruction. But Jesus with an agenda to restore. Amen. He said, I've come to give you life. Amen. Not on that, but you may have life abundant. I pray for everyone that is in my voice. In whichever area of your life that you have suffered any sickness, may have will heal you that of Jesus. He said, I came to, came to give you life. I'm a life giver. The same way devil is a life taker. Jesus is a life giver. So if 
you have the understanding, who will you embrace? Who will not be forced? If you know that the devil is a life taker and Jesus is a life giver, you don't need to be forced to choose who to follow. Nobody will force you. You will singularly, if you are in your right mind, choose the one that gives life. The one that came to restore. The one that can make a way. We will see why you choose it if you have the knowledge. But when you lack the knowledge, you will choose the wicked one because it is easy to get from him. Unknowingly, he has an agenda of destruction awaiting you in the front. Go and ask a lot of people that have made it before. True. Most of them are begging for money now. Some of them even die before their time. Out of picking me, cheating people, keep cheating. I like people to cheat me, but I won't cheat you. I, I like people to cheat me. Because I know you won't go free. Yes. But I won't shoot you. If I do business with you, I won't shoot you. But shoot me, it's not a problem. I don't fight over money. No, I don't. It doesn't matter how big the money is. But what I understand too well is, I have the understanding when you take something that is not for you. When you take from the devil, you go to the devil for help, you are already seeking your own downfall. You go to the devil for protection, <laughs> it's like you take an arrow back to protect you. It's, it's, a, it's a killer, he steals, so you now go for somebody to protect you. Oh, I put my children in your care. Very good. Then you begin to steal their glory. You steal their vision. You take their vision. You take their blessing. And when your children now is going, it's nothing left. It's just walking. I pray for everyone that is under my voice. That the devil might have taken anything from you. By the power in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be restoration. Now the name of Jesus. Let there be restoration. Now the name of Jesus. Let there be restoration. Now the name of Jesus Christ. A man said he was taking the glory of their own siblings. Every year, every three years, he must renew the vow to take the glory. He was taking the glory of all the siblings. None of them are going to anybody. He take all their glory. At the end of the day, he himself will So he destroyed people and he himself was destroyed. He was using people glory to function. Because he has seek a power from the devil. He has sought a blessing from the devil. Instead of him to go to the one that can give life. The one that can restore. The one that can create and recreate. I don't know what you need, but he has it. Jesus has everything. Oh, because he won't do it in your time. That's the problem. Knowledge like tells me to wait until he do it. I will not do it at my time. That's the problem. But in Babala, we will do it at your time. Jesus is too slow. I have that. I have people say, Oh, you are praying to God. God will not answer you on time. It's good. Because he will answer you when he knows that you need it. There are some times he will answer you speedily. There are some times that will delay to answer you. To see if you are due for that blessing. To see if you are really ready for what you are praying for. To see that you are getting mature until you blow open the door. You must have the understanding that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. It takes knowledge to know that. That I'm going through circumstances right now. Things are very tough. But I know He will not leave me nor forsake me. He won't leave me. He loved me so much that He will leave me to die because it's a shame to Him. If you worship God with all your heart and he leave you to the prey of the devil, the devil can attack, they can do you know Job now. You see what they did to Job. God sees him, there are challenges. Most of us will go through challenges in life. Doesn't mean that God has leave you. Praise God. But God wants to pay you double for your trouble. 
I see you receiving double. In the name of Jesus, I see you receiving double. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what you have lost, but I see God is turning them back in doubles. In the name of Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Job was honest. He was humble, man. He didn't sin. But yet, affliction come upon him. And that's why you don't look at man and jump them by what came over them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because the devil know how to preach his gospel. If a most righteous man in them don't stand, the devil can say, God, I want to attack him. Because he wants to do it by anything. Because if the devil can bring the most righteous man down, everybody will leave church. For example, I'm just using an example. If you know oh, that man is so righteous, and the devil bring him down, people will say, ah, where is his God? And that's the time God wants to see how many people will remain. Because if you know your God, you will know that challenges in life, it doesn't mean that the man is not righteous. It can be a moment of strengthening. But it takes nothing to know. Some of you may be going through that challenge right now. It takes knowledge to know that after this, I am coming out better. I pray for somebody. After your situation, you are coming out better in the name of Jesus. You are coming out shining in the name of Jesus. It takes no need to understand that when you go through up and down, God is preparing me for my next. It doesn't matter what the doctor says about you. He, tell me what, is a life giver. He's not interested in taking your life. He's a life giver. And if he's a life giver, he can change every hogger. I pray for people that have an issue with their hogger. I see restoration coming out of the name of Jesus. Every hogger that is failing you, may the Lord restore in the name of Jesus. Every hogger failing your children, may the Lord restore in the name of Jesus. Every hogger failing your family, may the Lord restore in the name of Jesus Christ. He's a life restorer. Who is he that speak when the Lord has not commanded? Including a doctor. Who is that doctor that's given me a date to die? Give me what is going to happen in your life. When the life taker said, No way. He said, I came to give you life. Amen. To give you more abundance. Amen. I came to give you long life. Amen. To give you more. Who oh, is that doctor to speak? You must understand what we are as a Christian. No way to run to when there are challenges. Any word that came out from your mouth first when you have issue, it matters. What you do first matters. It tests God who you really are. Some of us are so fearful when the situation arises. No. You see, I have not given unto you the spirit of fear. When there is fear, there is no faith. When there is faith, there is no fear. Fear just tells you you lack faith. Absent of faith, fear comes in. I bound every spirit of fear out of your life. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of fear out of your home. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of fear out of the life of your children in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what you are afraid, but the Lord say is in control. Amen. God say, I am in charge of your life. Amen. I will not allow the devil to do what they have planned. Amen. You will never be put to shame. Amen. You will never be put to shame. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Devil will not have his agenda over your life Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. The agenda will not prosper Amen. over your life Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It can build a nest on somebody's say, but not your own nest. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 28. Romans 20, uh, chapter 1 verse 28. Romans chapter 1 verse 28. I'm going to round up with that. They will go to pray. Time is already even gone. You see, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind.
to do those things which are not convenient. I pray for you Amen. that Lord will not give you to the reprobate mind. He said, as they do not want to retain God in their knowledge. You know what? They don't care about what God says. They don't want to believe in what God says. Because the Bible is too old. They think the Bible is not talking to them. It's talking to the generation of old. He said, because they found that I don't need God. His principle is slim material. I can't use it. I can't follow his word. He said, God gave them to the public mind. And what happened to them? <coughs> to do those things which are not convenient. They are now running from Paul to Paul. They are calling prophets from prophets. I know of, of somebody that was building, 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 big church for it's not, it's nothing wrong in doing that. But he was doing that because he was thinking something will happen. After five years, what he was doing was not going. The, the, the letter five with the prophet. They now fight. Big fight. Because God must be God. She must be first and the last in our life. We must retain the knowledge of God in our thinking. If God is in your thinking, in your knowledge, every of our action, when we see what we God says about the situation, anything you want to do, you will look at God first. What will He say? You know, because we don't believe that God is everywhere. He can see everywhere. We don't believe. We say it, but our actions say otherwise. Because if you believe that God sees everything, you won't steal from your neighbor. You won't lie to your neighbor. If you know that God sees everything, you will do what is right every time in your life. Because you know it's besides you, it can seize you. But because we as Christians, we don't believe that. We only believe that maybe God is in the church. After we left, no, God doesn't see us again. No. God sees every man. Even in our hearts, in our thinking, He sees us. That's how so my crucible is. He sees your thinking. As I see that, I see what I go to the, the next seconds. You'll be shocked if God can just uh, play our mind on the screen. You'll be shocked that the person that you are able to with he was planning for against you. Praise God. You'll be shocked that some people after the service where they are going to. You just, just, just zoom in the zoom. Maybe fight with you broke up here. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> because when you see the eye of the people that like, yeah, yeah, me. Praise God. But we want to understand. That God sees every heart. He sees every intention. Knowledge tells us to know who God is. What he stands for. What we must do to please him. I rest on our feet, please. I don't know which area of your life that you need the restoration. I want you to lift up your voice and do to say, Lord, restore. You need to shout, restore. You need to shout, restore. I don't know where you want God to restore you. You need to mention them. Some of you want a business. You want your life to be restored. You want your home to be restored. You want your marriage to be restored. You want your ministry to be restored. You want to be restored with your relationship with Him. Father, Lord, we need restoration. Over this home, over this home, home and every family. Over this ministry, Lord, we are shout to restore. Restore your church. Every church's love, let your restoration power come upon it. In the name of Jesus, restore us, O Lord. Restore our emotion. Restore our mind. Restore our marriage. Restore our children. Restore every life, O Lord. Restore our health. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let there be restoration. Over every business, Lord, restore. In the name of Jesus, over our family, Lord restore. In the name of Jesus, Father restore. In the name of Jesus Christ, that those who the people seek a Father restore. In the name of Jesus, let your restoration power fall upon him. In the name of Jesus, let your restoration power fall upon him. In the name of Jesus. 
Lord, restore my life. Lord, restore my organs. Lord, restore my health. Lord, restore my family. Lord, restore my children. Lord, restore me life here. My token to live by the Catholic Catholic. My Zulu get a bully and get a bow. Father, restore. In the court and easy Catholic. Lord, restore. In the name of Jesus. My Zuzi get a brand new Catholic bow. Father, let there be restoration. My Zoko to live by the Catholic Catholic. Father, let there be restoration. Over every life. Over every home. Over every hogger. My Laduzi get a bow. Father, restore, restore our minds, restore our minds, restore our children, restore the mind of our children. In the name of Jesus, Lord, restore this ministry, restore the power in the church. In the name of Jesus, restore every lost years. In the name of Jesus, restore our children academics. In the name of Jesus, Lord, restore. Lord, restore. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. Marco Zebra, the Kadebo, Jan de Yanibu, KK de Boko de Bosica Tonyania, Las Villa Cotonyania. Father, let there be restoration. For in Jesus' name we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I lift every word that is under my voice to you. Father, whatever that needs to be restored, Lord, in your mercy, restore them in the name of Jesus. Every failing organ. Lord, restore in the name of Jesus. Every failing heart. Lord, cause a restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. The dry bone lives again. Whatever that be dry your life, I speak life to it now. In the name of Jesus. Every dry bone lives now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your life by the power in the name of Jesus, I restore them in the name of Jesus. Christ. Everything the devil has stolen from you because our God can see everything, even whatever the devil steals, wherever the devil keep it, God can see it because we serve a God that sees everything. Whatever the devil has taken from you, receive them back in full now. I close the door of poverty. In the name of Jesus, I close the door 
of our vision. In the name of Jesus, as from today, anyone that touched you, the Lord will touch them. The Lord will scatter them. In the name of Jesus, as from today, I place the mark of Christ on you. No one troubles you anymore. No one troubles your children anymore. No one troubles your marriage anymore. In the name of Jesus, wherever you go, empire will locate you. Wherever you go, empire will find you. Wherever you go, God will go with you. In the name of Jesus, whatever you touch, God will touch. In the name of Jesus, whatever you touch, heaven will touch. In the name of Jesus, wherever your children go, the Lord will protest them. The Lord will guide them. Whatever your children touch, the God Almighty will touch. In the name of Jesus, as from today, you will receive an evil backing. In the name of Jesus, as from today, you will receive an evil backing. In the name of Jesus, I see a new job for you. In the name of Jesus, receive it now. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus, my Receive your breakthrough. Receive your testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. right? By the power of the name of Jesus, the Bible says, at the mention, at the, the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Hallelujah. By the power in that name, every situation in your life, I command them now to bow out. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. every unpleasant situation in your life, I say bow out now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. every power that be hidden beside behind you, that be hidden in your home, that be hidden inside of you, by the name that's above every other name, I command them with fire. Out now, out now, out now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone under the sound of my voice, that their blood has been contaminated. I give you the blood of Jesus. I punch your blood. Every contamination in your blood that Kazuke is punched down in the name of Jesus Christ. It is punched down in the name of Jesus. I anoint your feet. Thank you, Jesus. He said, My people gone to captivity for lack of understanding. Your feet will not carry you to captivity. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. By the power of the mighty name of Jesus. I see a breakthrough for you. Amen. I see a breakthrough for you. Amen. What you have been trying to do before, God just told me it is done. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said, It is done. Amen. God has done it. Amen. Shout a bigger hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout a bigger hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout a bigger 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 hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I am next in line for testimony. My home is next in line for testimony. My children are next in line for testimony. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Praise Master Jesus. If you under the sound of my voice, either you are in this room or you are outside this room, if you have not given your life to Jesus, I want to pray this simple prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you today. For you give me of all my sin. Wash me with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. I believe that the Son of God, I believe that you died for me. I believe that on the third day you rose from death. And I know and I believe that you are seated on the right hand of your Father. I know you are coming back for me. Lord Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, save me. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's a very important prayer to give our life to Jesus. I've said it before, there was a church, the pastor himself came out and say you want to give him life. People were laughing. But because the pastor have the understanding, he have the knowledge, that he's not running the race with the member. All the members in church are saying, eh, our pastor, because he knows where he stands with God. Praise God. Amen. So it's not, don't be ashamed that you, are, you want to give your life to Jesus. It's a thing of joy. 
Heaven rejoice for that. People are actually not rejoice because there is a rejoice in heaven for a soul that is one. May the Lord bless you. I will open your eyes and give you more knowledge of his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we just lift up our offering to God? Lift up your offering to God. We need to pray to him. Lift it to God. We get to pray to him. We get to speak to your offering. Speak to your offering. Speak to your offering. Thank you, Jesus. As I pray that prayer, begin to say, Lord. Today is the end of our fast and prayer. Lord, let me come out from this fast and prayer better. Let my relationship come out better. If there's anything you can gain from this fasting, is to say, Lord, where I was before, I am now closer to you. I am, that is the most important gain from this fasting. That where I was, my Christian life has been coming better. My Christian work has become better. My spiritual life has grown. That give every joy. Jesus. It will be exercise in futility. If nothing changes spiritually with you, if your work with Jesus is not renewed, if you are not moving closer to Him, it will just be exercise in futility. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Eternal Rock of Peace, we thank you. Lord, we release this offering to you. Let it be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, as we combine it with the church, let it increase your church spiritually. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord God, every hand that are blessing, in return, bless them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Those that do not have, Lord, bless them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Those who are not convinced, Lord, convince them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord God, as we live here today, Wherever we go, let your power go with us. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus, yeah. so shall it be. Yeah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Yeah. We are giving to the Lord God. We are the faith. Jesus.